was oh. good work, good job. That's why we do this. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my life. That was maybe like the most powerful experience I've ever had. <laughs> One more. <laughs> After finishing our fourth season with an incredible, life-changing experience at the Mill Agent's house, it took us time to process what happened. Things were expanding beyond the conventional paranormal field, beyond the things usually shown, and beyond the things that are easy to understand. We knew we had to do everything in our power to keep up. We had to keep learning, we had to keep growing, and that's when we heard from the Newkirks. Greg and Dana, the curators of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, had finished their research with the Dybbuk box we charged them with. They were ready to share their studies, and we were ready to go further into the beyond. Hi, Corey. What's going on, guys? Good to see you again. My name is Corey Heinzen. Uh, I'm a member of Maine Paranormal Society and uh, Graves Paranormal Society. I know Haunt Me from a uh, few investigations they've invited me on here at the Greater Rumford Community Center, the Mexico Rec Center, and uh, Parsonfield Seminary. This has always been one of our favorite locations, and so I know yep. I'm thrilled <laughs> to be back here. So we have a lot to do tonight, and we're going to add a little bit more onto that, too, because you were gracious enough to let us borrow the box so that our friends, the Newkirks who run the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and Occult, could study it for the past few months, because it was like far beyond our expertise level. Yeah. So we thought it would be great to kind of combine everything tonight, come back to this place where we first met you and have them bring back that box and investigate with us tonight after presenting you with their findings. Let's do it. Ready okay. to get it back? Yeah, let's bring them in. Bring them in. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey guys. My name is Greg Newkirk and I am the director and curator of the Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult. My name is Dana Matthews and I've been a paranormal investigator for 20 years and a caretaker of haunted and cursed and paranormally significant items for the past uh, four years. We've been big fans of Haunt Me for a long time. So when we had the opportunity to meet Ty at Mount Washington back in November, uh, unbeknownst to us, Corey was there too and Corey actually had the box with him. At the end of the event, he just kind of walked up and said, I feel like you guys need to study this for a while. So we studied the box for about six months, and there were some really frustrating moments, some really interesting moments, uh, but the conclusion that we ended up coming to was that there was something much stranger going on with the box than what appeared on a surface level. It's been a very interesting six months. We've learned a lot of very interesting things. I don't think there's any denying that there's some very strange activity attached to this box. Now, what we found though, is that it might be even stranger than you guys even thought. I think that maybe the source of the strange activity with this box is a little weirder and potentially a little bit more dangerous. Just as we left it. Mm -hmm. Three important questions for you before we get into this. Okay. Where'd you get this? Got it from a friend that bought it in an estate sale. Okay, all right. Have you ever opened it? I personally have not. Do you know anyone that has? Not, that, not to my knowledge, no. Okay, third question. Where did the name Paimon come from? The name Paimon kept coming through the spirit box. Okay, interesting. So, it's our opinion, this thing doesn't have a demon in it. Mm -hmm. This thing has something even stranger in it. Really? I believe that this thing is filled with the psychokinetic energy of everybody that has fed this thing fear. Where the name Paimon came from, that's an interesting thing. Uh, I feel like every session that we've done with this thing, we can't get the name Paimon to come through. And I don't know if that's because we're not ex expecting the name Paimon to come through, or if it doesn't want to say it to us. Mm -hmm. What we're getting is very very kind of scary, very almost cliche horror movie demon stuff. Anyone who studied like Solomonic magic or theology or demonology would say, this thing's being a little bit too outright mm -hmm. with what it's telling people. 
it's not quite being sneaky enough. We can take it a step back even further than that. So what, what we recently did was we had it scanned. We had an MRI done on it and an X-ray done on it. So basically it's already open because we know what's inside of it. Like right. there's no, there, okay. we absolutely 100% know what's inside of it. What's inside of it is not what is inside of traditional Dybbuk boxes. So like the, ele the key elements that are kind of necessary in order to create a Dybbuk box are not inside of here. What's inside of here is possibly strange or possibly mundane, depending on what way you kind of look at it. When we study haunted objects, we normally look at them from three different angles. There's the very obvious, there's something that is, is dead or possibly inhuman that is attached to it for some reason or other. Maybe there's a message they're trying to send or maybe they just really like the item. The other is like a residual haunting where maybe the item was part of some big psychic imprint, some big emotional event and then there's a thing that replays. Mm -hmm. But there's a third version that I think people don't talk about quite as often, which is an intentional haunting. And that means that something has been haunted by intention. And the one thing that continually happens with this box is people are very afraid of what's going to happen if they open it. People are very afraid because they think there might be a demon inside. People are unintentionally feeding those fears inside. And I really think what's happened is whether it's inside this box, whether it's around this box, whether it's in people's heads when they look at the box, they are manifesting something inside of this. So basically, it's imagine it this way. Every single person who comes into contact with this box creates some kind of an emotional connection to it, whether it's fear or curiosity or general anxiety about it. Stuff every, all of us have done. All of us. Yeah. Every, every, every yeah. us too. Yeah. Exactly. But really what's happening is it isn't necessarily a demon. It's a PK manifestation. It's psychokinetic energy being manifested by the people who are feeding it directly into the box. That has become very demon-like. It absolutely has. There's pieces of all of us in this. We are all responsible for what happens with it at this point because right. we've all helped manifest it into what it is now. As we give this back to you, we're at a crossroads with this. Mm -hmm. And this is ultimately your responsibility what's gonna happen with this. If you take it around and people are scared of it, they're gonna feed into it. What's gonna happen then, eventually, as happens with these things, it's gonna get consciousness. Mm -hmm. At a certain point, it, PK can actually become conscious of itself, and then it can do whatever it wants. How close is it to consciousness at this point? Here's the thing, you guys have all experienced this. Right. There is some kind of semblance of intelligence in the responses. It does to respond. a point. To a point, and then it's as if there's a wall and it right. doesn't understand anything beyond True. that. The only reason that we haven't opened it is out of respect for you and out of respect for you. I think if it's opened, a lot of that fear will go away. Mm -hmm. uh, but everyone has to be in the right mindset yes. if they do that. Right. Everyone has to not be afraid of it. Yes. Everyone has to know that what's in it is not a demon, it's something a little weirder, mm -hmm. but manageable. So my suggestion would be, stop calling it Paimon, yes. stop calling it a demon, and potentially, if everyone feels comfortable enough at some point in the future, I would sit down and sever all of those cords that you've all put into it. Well, baby steps. I have a, I've never done this before, but do you mind if we start that process? I would not touch it. Absolutely. That's perfect. First step. This is significant because the only person here who's touched it is Carol. I'm not afraid of you. Are you? I'm not afraid of you either. Still not afraid of you. <laughs> I like you and we should be friends. Aww. Look at that. Oh. Aww. He knows I'm not afraid of it. Good. And he knows that. I respect him. And I mean, if that's giving him power, then I apologize. I don't know whether or not to be more nervous with the responsibility of having the box. I just came in, you know, and came to be in possession of something like this, you know, and so any information is great information for me. You know, I presented it as what it was because of what it was given to me as, you know, but now obviously it's, it's going to be different. I don't think it's dangerous uh, as long as I present it the way that Greg and Dana just presented it and saying, hey, look, this is what it is, but it's not going to hurt anybody because it's contained. The minute people start fearing it, though, Apparently it's gonna blow up and destroy everybody, so. 
Well, that was cool. That was really cool. <laughs> Good job, guys. We have answers and we have a strategy of how to defeat something that two years ago scared me so bad that I couldn't even look at it. I do believe in the power of intention and if people are feeding it fear, it's gonna grow off that and it's grow, gonna grow into something scary. So I think it was a good idea to give it to them. I like their findings and I think Corey's on board. I'm really excited for Corey and his team going forward. I really hope that they go in the direction of keeping it just like in a positive state um, because it can still remain um, that really awesome, like energetic boost to investigations just without all of the negativity. There's a lot of unfinished business with the GRCC. I mean, we had so much happen the last time we were here. Questions with Jim Jim upstairs. The magician was obviously a really strange entity that Katie and I encountered. The bald man and the spirit Anne down in the basement. When we came here, it was the beginning of season three. And I think that having the Newkirks here and having two more years of experience on our side, I think that we can kind of approach these in a more organized fashion so that we can get the most out of our visit here tonight. We were here in the third season of Haunt Me, and at that point it was the most active place that we'd ever been to. We rated it a 7.5, which will be our new pre-rate for tonight's investigation. We rated it that high because Ash had a ton of activity that was personal to her that was in a threatening nature. We got EVPs, we had the fire alarm get pulled, which is actual physical interactions with our environment that showed intelligence. The evidence was overflowing that night. So, going into it tonight, we're here with the new Kirks and we're here with new technology and new experience to try to see if that rating still fits, if it's accurate for this place, or if it's time to update it. The Traveling Museum of the Paranormal and the Occult is the world's only mobile museum of haunted, cursed, and paranormally significant artifacts. Part of the museum's mission is to bring these artifacts to people so that they can experience paranormal activity and help us research these artifacts. The museum really started off by accident and it was sort of a place that we would show people things that we collected on our own investigations and eventually people started giving us things. So now we've got upwards of almost 200 items and basically we travel all across the country and show them to people and we investigate with them together and kind of bring awareness to haunted objects. So... It's already been a big day. Yeah, I mean, so. <laughs> I mean, we're standing in front of this and after like having had the time to examine everything, it's crazy that the investigation hasn't even started. Right, <laughs> this is yeah. now the part where we start. I know Katie wanted to set up um, an altar with the help of Dana. Yeah. I'm really interested to yeah. see what Dana this has too. This is witch power maximum tonight. <laughs> I mean, so. yeah. It's gonna be epic, it's gonna be an amazing altar. Yeah, I am. Uh, Lord, I am so excited to investigate with the Newkirks. I have been looking forward to this for so long. So when I was holding Billy earlier, um, I felt myself, I felt him kind of taking me out. And so I kind of wanted to see where he wanted to put the altar. You want to bring him? Yeah. Maybe yeah. that would be a good thing. We can start showing you around. And then yeah. if there's a spot that either you or Billy feels drawn to, then yeah. we can uh, stop the there. The object that yields the most evidence out of all of the objects that we have would probably be Billy. And it's because he is just so incredibly active. He loves to talk to people. He loves to interact with people and really kind of make a connection with people. Could we also, I don't know if this is a thing, but can we ask the rest of the objects not to mess with us during part one? Yes, I mean, we absolutely can. That's a great idea. And just establish, yeah, it's, really good idea. it's good to establish boundaries for sure, yeah. So we're gonna start by doing um, a regular investigation with the Newkirks. We're gonna bring them through, kind of introduce them to some of the places that they saw in the episode. Midway through the night, we're gonna break. We're each gonna go back to the museum, select an object that we believe we need to spend some time with or that could help us yield more evidence and then at the end of the night we're going to bring all of our objects together and try to have um, a mass EVP session with Billy the idol as a tool
tool. Yeah. Okay, right, so where should we thing. start? Do you want to bring them to the basement? I think the basement, and then just because like we're doing, again, a kind of a daytime investigation right now as the sun sets, so the basement would be a great place to start. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's do it. Right. Unlike what we usually do where we break off into smaller groups and spread, I think it's going to be really intriguing to go as a big group to start off and then split later in the night. So we're going to start in the basement. Um, we've had a lot of activity down there, and it's going to be interesting to me to see what Dana picks up on because she is very sensitive in the way that Ash and Katie are, who have had tons of experiences down there. So Carol and I set up two soccer balls on cones downstairs, and we asked the spirits that we were kind of hearing rustling around downstairs that if they wanted to talk to us mm -hmm. to knock them over, and if they did not want to talk to us to keep them there, but we're going to talk to them anyway. We kind of were like established like a if you want to, if you don't want to kind of a thing. Okay. So we'll see. See where they're at. We'll see where they're at. Um. Okay, watch out. There's an extra step down there, guys. Oh, one of the balls is down. All right. Oh, yeah, look at that. So one of them wants to talk. <laughs> Was that on IR camera? Yep, yes. Okay, really? Yes. Cool, okay, yes. good, yeah. yeah. So I set it up on the cone and it falls and kind of plops along the basement floor just as it had in the past. And so now we know that there is somebody in the basement who is listening to us and is willing to kind of go along with our suggestions. Most of the activity was coming from that end of That's the basement. That's the, the opening to where the fire alarm was pulled mm -hmm. in that oh, corridor. Okay. Over there leads to the catacombs in that doorway that I'm pointing at is where the bald she man She opened sighted. the door and saw the bald man oh, right there. Boy. That was right yeah. there. The fact that I was the only person to see the bald man. I'm kind of wondering if there's more to that than I know. And also, I'm just kind of wondering if I was just scared that night and sort of hysterical and maybe I saw something. I mean, who knows? I'm kind of curious to investigate that further. I don't feel scared particularly of the possibility of there being a bald man. Yeah, um, and when I, the very first time I saw like the creature thing, it was coming out of the right side door oh. and going into the other door. So it kind of whatever that is. Should we take a moment to talk to Billy or do you want to keep moving? Let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah, we have so much let, more. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And we'll, we'll have a chance to chat with Billy. And yeah, see. we'll chat with Billy. All right. When we first rolled into town, the, the thing that I did notice was very close by is a waterfall and very close by is a factory. And the waterfall is kind of emitting this crazy, crazy positive energy and the factory is a vacuum and it's kind of sucking it all in. And this building is kind of smack dab between the two of them. So there's a weird feeling here. There's like a, you can feel that there's a lot of kind of commotion and energy happening all pretty much all over the place. So when we passed through here, I immediately stopped and looked down here, here and I too. really yes, wanted is, to go this way. This is Jim wow. Jim's hallway, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is Jim Jim's hallway. Right, yeah, Billy, I've tell got, us what you think. I've got a headache here. Uh, I can feel here. him pulling this way. You can. You can. Yeah. He's interested. For sure. All right, awesome. Awesome. Let's, do let's it. go. Come on, Billy. <laughs> Voodoo out of old compass. There's the locker room. Okay. Maybe we should let Billy lead the way. Straight stuff? What do you think? I mean, I'm feeling this intense urge to just keep going this yeah. way. Yeah, all right, let's yep. do it. So there's the, the gym. This goes up to the oh, like okay. layer. Wow. This is the gym. This is the gym. Yeah, because immediately wow. it's like, like he wants to come in here. All right, Billy. So a woman actually died here that we know of during one of the basketball games. She was in the stands up here. And also Jim Jim died here and he was like a janitor or something. Yeah, and I think he died, that's his, that's where that's, we did our tarot That's reading. where we did the tarot reading and saw the magician come up the stairs. Yeah. And he also hangs out up here sometimes. Yeah. So the magician seems to be the warden of the place, if you will. He kind of, checks on everybody. He also sort of seems like he's the only one that can be everywhere. He can shut down energy like that. So if you diss him in any way, he will make all of the activity in the night stop. So we found that the more we feed his ego, the more evidence we get and the more willing the other spirits are to talk to us. So he seems like he's in charge. Um, but what's very interesting is that we have Billy here tonight. Billy is also in charge. 
And so what is gonna happen when they meet? This, um, I think he feels like he's like, put me down. I wanna, put me down. I wanna stay in here. Okay, okay, yeah. We don't have to keep carrying him. Yeah, you can absolutely set him down here if you want. Here we go. He likes to be the center of attention. Perfect, Billy. There you go. If you need us, you make a noise and let us know. All right. Yeah, I think that's where he wants to be. At least for now. All right. So help us out tonight, Billy. Yeah. We got a lot to figure out. Soak it in. You can help us investigate this place. I feel like this would be a good spot for something to just sit and watch. Yep. Right? <laughs> We're doing an investigation of the GRCC. I am leaving this recorder with Billy. Um, he has a bunch of alarms next to him that he can set off if he needs us. I just saw the reflection of somebody in the basketball. Um, guys, it's over there. You can keep coming. Are they up here or are they down there? It's up there. I think they're up here. Yeah, I think they're up here with us. Here, I'm gonna come a little closer to you, okay? I won't come too close. You can keep coming out next to us. I'm gonna walk along the side. So you feel like you can walk past me if you want. You don't have to retreat. Um, I just wanna show my friends your space. And it all changes right yes. here. <laughs> Holy, that's like right it's there. It's cold. This is, it's cold right here. We, uh, there is a few of us, and yes, we are moving here and there in the room, but please don't feel like you have to run. We're not chasing you. We're not here to upset you. We really just want to meet each of you. That's right. really the goal. It's true, we really like your space. It seems like we're chasing you, but we're, we're not trying to be yeah. that way. The magician here really like to talk to the magician. Did anybody? Was somebody whispering? Mm -mm. Did you guys hear the, the whispering, whispering yeah. like over there? Billy, can you tell any of the people here, the people we can't see, can you tell them we really want to talk to them, and the best way for them to let us know we're here or that they're here with us is to just make a knock on the wall. Probably now would be a good time to make an altar. That sounds right? like a really yeah. good idea. Katie and I are going to build an altar for communication. And it basically, it's just going to be churning out that kind of intention into the environment and letting everything here know, hey, we're here to investigate, and we really want to kind of communicate with you. And if you are interested in communicating with us back, the door's open. I love basement smell. Hey, so somebody knocked this ball off earlier. Is that person still with us? I'm specifically looking for Anne tonight. Does anyone know where Anne is? The name Anne came through the spirit box with the session we did with Corey. And I think she even said, help me a couple times. When we asked her if the bald man had something to do with the reason she needed help, our cameras died and there were knocks on the door. So the bald man definitely seemed to have something to do with the reason Anne was feeling scared or oppressed. So I put that light down on the floor just in case you don't feel comfortable walking up to one of us. That's a good safe way to let us know that you're here without getting too close. And just a reminder, these will not hurt you. This is something that, that Dan and I have started doing for the last year or two, and it's just a simple visualization thing. But we found that a lot of the times it seems to work pretty well. Um, since we don't exactly know, you know how ghosts hear us or communicate with us, uh, we've been starting to do this thing where we put our intent into the environment. Yes. And see if that will make a difference. Mm -hmm. 
I'm into it. So everybody get real comfy. Take a deep breath. Focus on your breathing. And just kind of take a few real, real big inhales. And then just exhale. And what I want you to do, I want you to see the word contact in your mind's eye and just bring that through. It'll be a little bit cloudy, but just bring that word through and make it solid. Just keep it right there. Just right in your mind's eye, contact. Because that's what we want to do. We're here. We want to make contact with these spirits. And then what I want you to do is imagine the way a good conversation makes you feel. Imagine being at dinner, you're having a really great conversation makes you feel really good and then take those feelings and just massage them into that solid word contact just put them in there make that solid word make contact feel the way you want contact to feel and then on exhale you're just going to shoot it up out of your head and into the building. Just let it shoot out and radiate everywhere. Ready? Take a real deep breath. Fire it off. Ooh, some lapis. Hi. You can come a little bit closer if you want. You can, you can come check the, out what we're up to. Yeah. I can see, I just In saw that doorway. movement through the doorway. Yep. You can come closer. Come on out. Would you like a piece oh. of charcoal? There's May tons I? Of it. Um, or lighter? Yeah. Where did I? Just oh, I see that? it actually. Wipe it. I mean, I guess the charcoal would make this burn longer. We're just gonna light this pile for now. Come on over. Yeah, you can come right right next to us if you want. bit closer. Maybe if we go downstairs, the 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 people here that um, that trust us can come with us. There's no reason to be afraid of, of communicating with us. I know we we might look as strange to you as you might look to us. Have you guys seen that flashing light? Yeah. Yeah. You saw that? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. Johnny, can you move your camera left and right real quick? No. No. It was b between those two pillars. You saw that flash? Yeah. yeah. I th if that flash isn't coming from anything electronic, mm -hmm. that's a really, really good sign. That means stuff's moving forward. That right? means stuff's starting to happen. Okay. I mean, I know, Ty, you've heard me talk about the flash. Yeah. That seems in everything we've done to be a precursor. When you start like seeing these the things, energy it's almost like a, it's up? like a pop, pop and it just, energy, then yeah. all of a sudden, 
things will start to happen. Right. I wonder what the girls are doing two levels like up. Oh yeah. my right. God, yeah. yeah. They might have just set that off. The more that we've researched everything from ufology to psychic phenomena to cryptozoology, we've noticed that these green flashes seem to pop up all the time. And we've seen them before in haunted houses. It's almost as if these things act as some kind of a weird precursor to paranormal activity. They sometimes e either announce the arrival or sometimes announce the departure of something that decides to just kind of pop in. And this place was filled with them. Is that water behind you, Ty? I don't know. Whatever you're doing, can you do it bigger and more purposeful at all? Ooh, I think I saw the crab thing again. Yeah, it sounded Did like- Did you? Nick, can you shift left and right with your camera? Oh, god damn. It's happening. Yeah. All right. I don't like, I'm not normally seeing stuff, so. Well, maybe that thing isn't bad. Maybe it just looks scary. We don't know. I mean, it's giving you a weird feeling, but that's because it looks strange. It's just bizarre, though, because I, like, firmly believe, like, after doing this for so long, that, like, no, there's not a crap man over in the corner, but there's something that has the energy that my brain is trying to interpret in a way that makes me understand what's over there. Yeah, and so the way, the it's way. showing it to you as a crab man. Right, exactly, Correct. which is like, this isn't, you're probably not gonna be okay with what's over here if it's a man who's bent over and using his hands for feet. I was sitting in the basement and then beyond our cameraman, I saw something back bend, like crab style, walk away and scurry off into the dark. And I saw it and I was like, this is not okay to like, don't touch it, don't talk to it, let it go away. Maybe it's far from human and it's trying to interpret what that would mean to us green and pop. it doesn't know how. You saw a green pop? Yep. That's great, that's great. Please keep trying, keep trying, oh. we can see you. Yeah, I just saw a shadow move by. All right. Come closer, come into the circle. Yeah, you're more than welcome to join us. Oh my God. I thought, ru What's going on? I thought Johnny was just rushing me. Really? They're coming at you? Yeah. What'd you see? I just, a big black, real quick. And I looked up, I expect Johnny to be, if there was no noise, that's why it caught me off guard. I just thought, you okay? Yeah, oh yeah, it was just so close to me. It was huge. Was it like the light of the camera? No, it was literally a, I can't say body because I couldn't see a shape, but a black mass right here. I can't even say right out of the corner of my eye. It was partially in my vision. And I was looking at the K2 on the floor and it just, it took up the camera light. So I thought Johnny had turned facing me. It was rushing me for some reason because it happened so quick. I feel like this might be a good time to pull the recorder out. Do it. Yeah? What do you think? Do it up. I have a new tarot deck. It is just in training, but others can come and touch it if you want and kind of push the cards around if you want. And if you guys want to pick one, you can. This one's like the obvious choice. So this is, this is what typically happens in the GRCC. It's all people. Oh, it's all awesome. people, <laughs> all the time. So we have two ladies, we have two queens. I don't know if that's just us. It could be us. <laughs> it's probably just us. <laughs> Who is it? Wands and swords. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fire and air. Yeah. I mean, that's what we just like put out there. Yeah. So I feel I like. I am Leo. Oh my God, you are? Yeah. I am Libra. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just us, I guess. So, um, come pick one of these cards. If there's anyone in here with us right now, and we feel like you're here. I'm gonna turn this on. I'm not gonna ask you any questions. What the? What happened? Nick, are you touching your screen? 
sorry. There's a, like Carol's black shadow just rolled across behind Nick on the ceiling. Oh, honestly, on the yeah. ceiling. I swear to God, I saw it again, and I'm just like, I'm not saying anything until someone else sees it. I'm just not. That's okay. You, yeah. you might have. You, you know what? Your intention experiment might have been better than ours. Well, see, that's the thing, and I'm like, is it just? Is it only on the plane that I can see it right now? Is it my intention? Or Maybe yours was so much brighter that they're attracted to you. Right, and so... It, <laughs> it's okay, Carol. Yeah. Oh, no, That's I know. Good. It's just, I wish I could just prove it and show what I saw in my eyes, but I'm we so glad you. I can Ty hear it in your it. voice, Carol. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on, this little silver box. You're going to see a little red light. I'm not going to ask you any questions yet. This is your opportunity. If there's anything that you need to say to us, talk into that light. We're going to give you like 30 seconds. We got. Okay, there's definitely something there. Right. Yeah, it's breathy. The, I can't tell what the second half is, but already I, f I feel like I hear, hey, I'm right here. Okay, can here I hear it, it one more time? Yeah. It's like whispering. Yeah. The presence that was behind us didn't really feel too great. Uh, it almost felt, uh, almost in a weird way, animalistic. Like it was watching us and it didn't want to get too close. Or maybe it couldn't get too close. But whatever it was, it didn't really feel like it was very nice. You ready? Mm-hmm. But like that, that was great. We're here with you. Can you tell us your name? Something man. No. It doesn't even have a name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen. Oh I don't want to bomb me into crap. That was a few words. Yeah. Is that something you've ever seen down here before? The crawling thing? Yeah. Katie saw it the Katie. last time we were here. I saw the bald man, but he was on two legs and was upright. What about you, Ty? No, I don't usually see things. I'd shit myself. I got a thing with crawling. I've never seen it. Huh. I, I don't see things ever, so that's good, right? The something yeah. something man is what I'm hearing. I so. never thought, I don't know, there's so many theories on crawling, but every single one I've heard is not good. Exactly. Well, here's an interesting thing. You know what I hear for that answer? The something man? I hear the crawling man. Really? Something's talking about the killer. There are two other no. No one. No one, but that's what I heard too. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Wait till you start hear hearing them down here. They'll come down here. Come on down. You can come down here and sit mm -hmm. with us. We'll pull some more cards. Or you can come and touch some of this equipment if you want. I want you guys to pick the cards. Yeah. I want you guys to come down and pick the cards and I'll tell you what they are. Not as much, it's not as fun for me to just pick them myself. Hmm, that's weird. I just watched something come through that doorway there. And it was, I don't know, low, really low to the ground. Oh no.
Not that far one, but that one. That right one. Yeah, it was oh. low to the ground. What is, where, is that a bad, I don't know what's through that door. That's the upstairs, that goes upstairs and that's the hallway. Okay. Yeah, it was like low, like cre kind of creeping a little bit, like it wagging its body and like, oh, oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was so loud. It was so that loud. Was him. <laughs> it was him. Yeah. And it's the creature that's from the basement. Yeah, and it was and just it's, like. I, it's making me really scared because up I until this moment. I think that's why wanted to come over here, I think. Up until this moment, I never thought it could leave the basement. But now, I'm connecting it all with the scratching. Oh. I have chills. My heart is racing. Yeah. I'm actually, uh, God, I'm scared, Billy.